This is the day Yahweh has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> Thank you again for tuning in with me for another chapter of Our Daily Bread. As we continue reading um, in Exodus here in chapter 30 today, evaluating the tabernacle and all the things uh, concerning um, the setting up of the tabernacle, the priests, and so forth. Today we'll be talking about the altar of incense, the census tax, and the bronze basin. Looking forward to having a discussion with you. Um, <clears throat> just to give you an idea, or remind you rather, um, the altar of incense is where we're starting out. So here is the, the Holy of Holies here. The altar of incense is right outside of the Holy of Holies. And this picture probably doesn't show it the best, but it's supposed to be directly right here in the middle in front of the mercy seat. Uh, let's see if I can get another picture of it. <clears throat> so you can't see it that well enough, but you get the idea. So have that image in your mind as we pick up our reading here at verse 1. You shall make an altar on which to burn incense. You shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its breadth. It shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horns shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, and its top around its sides and its horns, and you shall make a molding of gold around it. And you shall make two golden rings for it, under its molding on two opposite sides. Uh, <clears throat> two opposite sides of it you shall make them, and they shall be holders for poles which to carry. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it in front of the veil that is above the ark of the testimony, and which in front of the mercy seat um, that is above the testimony where I will meet meet you. So ain't that beautiful? So like we just mentioned, the altar of incense where it was to be in front of the mercy seat. You couldn't, it, it was, it was, and let me go back to this picture. It was, uh, <clears throat> I guess it's the best one I have, so it's supposed to be right here in the middle. But um, it was directly in front, um, and they have it here, but it's, I believe it's probably in the middle here. But um, it was directly in front of the Ark of the Covenant, or the Mercy Seat, rather. Um, and what we'll learn is the Altar of Incense represented um, something. And I have a few words on that so let me get to that uh, let's finish reading this first and sh and Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it every morning when he uh, let me make sure I start the same place <clears throat> yeah and you shall put in the front of the veil that is above the ark of testimony in front of the mercy seat that is above the testimony where I will meet you and Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it every morning when he dresses the lamps he shall burn it and when Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight, he shall burn it. A regular incense offering before Yahweh through your generations. You shall not offer unauthorized incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering. And you shall not pour a drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year. With the blood of the sin offering of atonement, he shall make atonement for it once in the year throughout your generations. It is most holy. To Yahweh, and isn't that what matters the most? That it's most holy to Yahweh, because uh, there's a lot of things that simply aren't very holy to us. You know, in this day and age, I would say, if you're watching this, um, the idea of being reverent towards individuals who are older or prominent, the idea of being having a sense of awe and holiness uh, when it comes to the things of Yahweh in my opinion, seems to diminish. So it doesn't matter that it's not holy to you. It doesn't matter that it doesn't feel special to you. He says, I'm telling you, it's holy to me. And therefore, it should be holy to you. But let's look at the what, what was the significance of this altar of incense. So I actually did a short study um, on this. And hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I can make it bigger. <clears throat> So what was the significance? If you remember back in Hebrews, um, we learned in the verse four, it says, now if we, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, talking about Yahshua, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. So these were to serve as a copy. Imagine that. So we actually get uh, 
uh, the idea of heaven being on earth and its makeup. <clears throat> Something is going on here that we have a copy here. Um, they serve as a copy of the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed before God, saying, <coughs> see, see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. So the author of Hebrews is also telling us that the significance is this. It's in heaven. It's actually a pattern by which you should follow. And we also see in Revelations that this bowl full of incense were the prayers of the saints. Listen to that. So that's what I wanted to um, get to and uh, want you to consider. Is that he wanted the prayers of the saints to be directly centered in front of the mercy seat, which is where Yahweh's um, presence will be. Um, they only enter there once a year. So this was a big deal. He put that right in the middle. He wants to hear and, and, and hear the, pr um, the prayers of the saints um, and smell that aroma. Look at that. So this is as if the prayers of the saints are coming up to him. And we also see it again um, here. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a gold censer, and it was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints. On the golden altar before the throne, and the smoke of incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. We also see in the New Testament in Luke that Zechariah... <laughs> Excuse me. Now, uh, now while he, Zechariah, was serving as priest before God, when he, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of Yahweh and burn incense. See, he's still doing that, burning incense um, here with Zechariah. And the whole multitude of the people were doing what? They were praying outside. Why? Because it was the hour of incense. They had this incense going up. <clears throat> Now, remember in that verse, it also says every morning when he dresses these lamps, when Aaron sets up at twilight, he shall burn it, a regular incense offering. Why, why was that important? Why did he have it set up that he regularly did this and had this incense constantly burning? Well, if you think about it, it's representing as prayer, it becomes clear that these prayers should be coming to him day and night constantly you know you have all these scriptures that talk about praying night and day we pray we constantly pray for you three times a day we pray they all join together constantly and pray always pray and pray in the spirit on all occasions so imagine this and i it, we don't have time to look in depth of all these but you get the idea so imagine for uh, it says for some days i mourn and fasted and prayed so imagine that this altar of incense let me go back to that slide where you see this um you see this uh, incense coming up. Imagine this incense is coming up. And people are having babies. People are getting married. So the prayers are still coming up. The incense are still, you know, there's been victory during war times. Um, there's laughter. There's joy. Um, people are being healed. And the prayers are coming up. The smoke of incense is still rising up. But also imagine that smoke, that incense, those prayers still continuing during the difficult times when people were dying. When disease was um, running amok among the community, when there was defeat of a war, no matter all these situations, the incense were still burning. Isn't that the call for us? That no matter what situation we're in, no matter what's going on in our lives, good or bad, we're still praying, praying, praying. Not praying a whole lot when things are bad, not praying a whole lot when things are good, but constantly praying all seasons for every occasion what a beautiful picture that is um, as those that altar of incense never stops burning <clears throat> could anyone light it now we learned that we not anyone could light that incense um, as a matter of fact um, there was some who tried and I don't want to get into so many detail here and spend that much time but there was one story in particular I couldn't help but to look at um, there's a story of a man who tried to go and light the incense and I'll let you read this for yourself and um, the elders came to try to stop him. And it says, then Uzziah, um, I need to pull that out so you can see that. So it says, then, then Uzziah was angry. Now he had a censer in his hand 
his hand to burn incense. He was not supposed to be in there. He was un uh, he was making an unauthorized fire. And when he became angry with the priest, because they were trying to tell him, do not do this. This is a bad idea. You are not ordained and, and, and sanctified to do what you're about to do. Yet his position got to his head. He thought he was somebody. Um, just because you're the king, don't make you over everything. There's a, there's one king, and he, he, he has control over everything. And Josiah uh, forgot about that. So when he became angry with the priest, leprosy broke out on his forehead. <clears throat> and you skip down to verse 21. The king Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death. From that moment, and it's amazing too, because Yahweh <clears throat> was patient with him. He's sitting here holding the incense in his hand, and this is a long story. But the point is, when he says no, he means no. And we'll see that again here as we continue to read. Uh, he died because of that anger and his refusal. Even though Yahweh was really patient with him, he went into the temple, he was holding the incense, all these things that could have cost him his life already. But yet he still did not yield. Um, let's look at verse 11 that Yahweh says to Moses, <clears throat> When you take the sins of the people of Israel, then... Each shall give a ransom for his life to Yahweh when you number them, <clears throat> that there be no plague among them when you number them. Uh, each one who is numbered in the census shall give it, give this half a shekel. According to the shekel of the sanctuary, the shekel is 20 jerobs. Half a shekel as an offering to Yahweh. Everyone who is numbered in the census from 20 years old and upward shall give Yahweh's offering. This was not a voluntary thing. This was a mandatory offering that you needed to give um, because your life was ransomed. I mean, for the ransom of your life, your life was saved. And it's all, it, to me, it seems like you're acknowledging and showing your gratitude to say, yes, um, Yahweh did save me. And he, this was a ransom for my life. Um, so there you go. In verse 15, the rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel. When you give Yahweh's offering to make atonement for your lives, you shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting. What was the money to be used for? It was to be used for the tent of meeting. Look at that. So even Yahweh had instituted uh, a practice that allowed the tent of meeting to be taken care of. Why? Because all things need maintenance. Um, even the tent of meeting need maintenance. Um, them constantly putting blood if you read it through um, um, how they uh, clean things and the sacrifices um, they may have needed to switch things out or clean it or wh whatever it was but it was for the service of the tent of meeting why that it may bring the people of Israel to what remembrance before Yahweh so as to make atonement for your lives bring the people of Israel to remembrance for Yahweh one thing you're going to see from the beginning of the scriptures to the very end is Yahweh has instituted certain practices for us so that we can remember and we can be remembered by him. So most of it has to do with us, though, because does he need our money? Does he need anything from us to be who he is? No, not at all. But the practices of remembering Passover and um, uh, Sabbath and Sukkot and many of the, uh, the holy days, not the holidays as we call them, the states but the holy days that he's put in practice they're there for a reason so that we can stop and remember because and, and there's those practices don't involve just mentally uh, zoning out it, it, it involves us actually doing things having a feast um, sometimes putting on certain clothes and belts and remembering of or making a suit coat making some kind of tent to live in to remember he came up with this idea and here's another idea that he came up with and isn't it genius uh, not that I'm a judge on that but of course uh, <clears throat> he's Yahweh he knows what he's doing in verse 17 Yahweh said to Moses you shall also make a basin of bronze with its stand of bronze for washing so the basin of bronze let me see if I can find a picture there so here's the lavar laver um, so I can find another picture so right here, right outside the tent of meeting, um, here is the altar that they would make sacrifices. Um, they would use this for washing, which we'll read here now. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with, with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister, when they come near the altar to minister, um, 
to burn a food sacrifice to food offer to Yahweh they shall wash with water so that they may not die they shall wash with their hands and their feet so that they may not die it shall be a statue forever to them even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations and that's a notion here um, oh man this is so good so it, what, what, what was the significance here? So let me come back to this picture just so we can have a discussion while we look at this. Uh, what was the significance here? So you have this, um, this place where you wash. He says, before you come in here to minister, I need you to wash. Now, was it because Yahweh was so, uh, 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 he didn't like dirt? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Is he so picky and such a germaphobe that he's like, oh gosh, no, 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 you got to wash yourself. Uh, we know better than that. So what was this about? You know that from reading up to this point that Yahweh is all about representation and symbolism. This is not just your hands and feet are dirty. He says, no, before you come to work before me and minister before me. Yeah, those are the words he said. He said, and that's why I underlined it. Call, come near to altar to minister. If you're trying to come to minister before me, I need you to wash your hands and your feet. You need to wash. What is that symbolic? So, obviously, this washing, this, and it's, it's not like we have Dawn that we're pouring into the water, really soaping it up there. He it says, it's, it, I need you to wash your hands and your feet to get ready to minister before me. Are you trying to minister with your hands and your feet on clean? So, I need you to wash your heart. I need you to wash your hands. Matter of fact, talking about heart, we see in um, Hebrews 10, it says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. When we draw near to God, let us do so with clean hearts. Hearts that have been sprinkled, a pure conscience. And um, we talked about this before as he prepared the priest and he had them cut the animals open and wash the insides. See, he's no, he's okay that we're not perfect, but we do need to come washing ourselves, having a clean conscience, having a pure heart, especially if we're intending to minister before him. Um, so you have this this setup that seems like, what is that for? Um, like, what's the big deal about washing? And if you're like me, you can, still, uh, without getting into the text, you can look at that and seem unnecessary. It's just a wash. My hands are fine. It's clean. It's like, no, no, no. I asked you to do that. And I told you to do that. And it represents something more than just keeping your hands clean. <clears throat> um, so much more can be said about this. Um, matter of fact, let me see if I had something else. No, I think that was it. Um, but so much more could be could be said or meditated on on this part when we wanted to make sure our hearts are clean uh, before Yahweh. In verse 22, Yahweh said to Moses, "Take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels, and sweet smelling cinnamon, half as much. That is 250, 250 of aromat aromatic cane and 500 of acacia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hint of olive oil. And you shall make of a of these a sacred." anointing oil blended as by the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the table of and all the utensils and the lampstand and its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils and the basin and the stand. You shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. So this this oil um, was to make all these things holy. It touched everything. And then you gotta and this is blowing my mind, Bart, because it, it's just oil. It's just stuff. The thing that made it holy is Yahweh telling you to do it and saying and that was holy. So that was it. It was simply I'm told you to do this and when you do that this is gonna be the most holy. And you knew it was because of the the, the uh, uh, practice you had to go through. Like this is a big deal, um, as we continue to see. It shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person, and you shall not make you shall make no other like it in composition. It is holy. 
and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds anything like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider shall be cut off from his people. Yahweh said to Moses, take sweet spices, um, starchy and onich and goblin, sweet spices with pure frankincense. Of, of each shall be there an equal part. And make an incense blend as by the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy. You shall beat some of it very small and put part of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting where I shall meet with you. It shall be most holy for you. And the incense that you shall make according to its composition, you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be for you holy to Yahweh. Whoever makes any like it, you, whoever makes any like it to use as a perfume shall be cut off from his people. Don't take that which is holy make it common. He was serious about that um, and he, had, he, he wanted no one to involve themselves with any, doing anything like that or to be cut off. I um, love this text. Um, we see bagging up here to, to recap. The altar of incense represented the the prayers of the saints coming up before him, he wanted to sit stationed right in the front there and always praying, always never ceasing to pray. I don't know what your yesterday was like, and I don't know what tomorrow will be like. I don't know what today is going to be like, but we're going to keep praying. Never cease praying. Um, he wanted us to give the census tax. This was to take an account for what he had done already and to help build it. You know, one point that... Um, um, I saw made on this one. Let me see if this is in here. Um, is in the New Testament, Yahshua is asked to give a temple tax, and um, and it was interesting because he was saying, "Who should pay the taxes, the sons or other people?" And they were like, "Other people." He's like, "Well, but yeah, to make sure I don't offend them, I still will pay um, this tax." He's like, I, "I think the point was we're the family. We're I'm his son." <clears throat> Um, but you see this practice still going on uh, up to that time. I'm um, the bronze basin. I love the washing. You know, it's synonymous with our baptism as we enter into the relationship with Yahweh, Yahshua, His Son. So uh, that washing is very important. We should not minimize that. And um, of course, the oil, which is to be holy as well. So again, we we see, we see this idea, uh, we see this practice of holiness, and all these things were made holy. And uh, he made sure that we knew that. Let us go forward today, um, thinking and meditating on how holy he made his temple, and we should be that temple. We should be those priests. And he was very picky. He wanted it to be be for glory and for beauty. And he wanted it to be holy, unlike anything else. Let us live today with that sense of pride, knowing that we have him living in us. And a humility, knowing that we are just earthen vessels in which he does, does so. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I pray Yahweh blesses you and keeps you.